Oh, sorry for the time. And uh, my name is Peng, and uh, my supervisors are Professor Bing Meng and Jing. And uh, I came from Victoria University of Wellington. The topic of my presentation is improved coding distance in multi objective optimization for feature selection in classification. So the main content is about feature selection. So what is feature selection? Feature selection to select a small number of relevant features from the original data size, which aims to maintain or even improve the classification performance. Uh, so normally a feature selection task is not an easy job because, because of the following reasons. So firstly, it, it has a, a large space and uh, also it exists a complex feature interactions. Uh, more importantly, feature selection is a problem with multiple optimal feature subsets. And also, feature selection is a multiple uh, uh, objective problem. So in the following, I will introduce the last two points in detail. So firstly, feature selection is a problem with multiple optimal feature subsets. So here I give an example from uh, other researchers to show the the meaning of uh, different uh, feature subsets which can achieve the same classification performance. So here uh, we have two different feature subsets. So here we can limit the first subset name subset one, and the second can be uh, subset two. So by using the, the two different feature subsets, we can get the same classification accuracy. So I mean the 100 percentage. But here the first, the, the feature M7836 is in subset one is observed as an upregulated protein. And another feature in subset two is observed as, as, um, as a downregulated protein. So by, but by using those two different feature subsets, we can get the same classification performance. So that may means that, that may mean that by using different function model, we can distinguish the disease people and the normal controls. So it, it has some important meaning in disease detection. So also feature selection is a multi-objective problem. So in this work, we plan to design uh, evolutionary multi-objective op, uh, uh, based feature selection algorithm. So to minimize the number of select features, and also to minimize the classification error rate is, are always in conflict. So the output of an EMO-based feature selection method is a size of subsize. So I just give a figure to show the output of an EMO-based feature selection method. So we can get the subsize one to subsize six. And the feature selection methods can be divided into three categories based on the evaluation criterion. Uh, I mean, the filter, the wrapper, the embedded based feature selection methods. So the filter methods always use certain statistical methods like the information gain. And the wrapper methods always use a specific learning algorithm, so like the KN. And the embedded methods always incorporates the feature selection as part of the training process. So generally speaking, a wrapper-based feature selection method can achieve better classification accuracy than a filter-based feature selection method. So in this work, we plan to design a wrapper-based feature selection method. And here I give a figure to show the basic procedure of, uh, of an EMO-based feature selection method. So mainly it includes so four parts. So the in initialization part, the search algorithm, the subset evaluation, and also including the environmental selection. So when the stop criteria is met, we can get the test performance based on the opt obtained feature subset from the training part. So uh, in this work, we are mainly targeted on environmental selection part. So for environmental selection, it is to evaluate our parents and our spring by using a predefined selection criteria, then to select a certain number of solutions enter into the next generation 
or to the external archive. So normally, two concepts are always used. Uh, I mean, the non dominant sorting and the crawling distance. So all, uh, so the uh, emo based method always use non dominant sorting to sort the solutions into different ranks. Then the solutions in each rank we use crawling distance to select solutions. So in this work, we are uh, focuses on crawling distance. We trying to um, find some limitations and when using those kind of concepts for this lecture. So first, I will introduce the basic concepts of uh, crawling distance. For standard crawling distance is proposed in 2002, and uh, the basic uh, concept uh, the basic one is is quite simple. It's when we when we need to calculate the crawling distance of one solution, like solution three, we need to calculate its crawling distance. We use the neighbors of the solution three. So here is neighbors are solution two and the solution four. So then we get the average set length of the cuboid. Then to get the crawling distance of solution three, but one thing you need to point it out is that this current distance is only involved in the objective space. So in 2017, so another current distance concept named the special current distance is proposed. So this current distance by considering the such space and the object, objectives at the same time, then to get the final current distance of the solutions. And uh, in the such space, the calling distance calculation method is the same as the calculation method in the objective space. So the difference is in the uh, to, to deal with the solution in the boundary of the uh, partial front. So when they get the calling distance in both spaces, they using this equation to get the final calling distance of the solutions. Then to select solution, enter into the next generation or enter or to the external archive. But when we use, use the, the, those kind of concepts to deal with the physicalization problem, <clears throat> we, we found that it has some following limitations. Like here, I give a figure to show the situation. Like here, we have six, uh, we have four and five solutions. Like uh, it's from subset one to subset five. Uh, for example, we need to select um, some uh, a certain number of solutions in enter into the next generation. So we need to calculate the, their coding distance. But if we calculate the coding distance of solution three, its coding distance will be zero because his neighbors are, its neighbors are solution S2 and the solution S4. So in the object space, because they are overlap at the same point, so the current distance of solution three will be zero. The zero means solution three is located in a quite crowded area. So during the evolutionary process, solution three will be removed firstly. <clears throat> but if solution three is a duplicate solution, like here, in, <clears throat> in the right hand, the, those three solutions, they choose, they select the same features. Then they have the same objective value or the fitness value. It's normal because they select the same features. So if uh, in this way, in this kind of situation, removing S3 is better for the uh, population because it's a duplicate solution. But if solution three choose different features from uh, as uh, S2 or S4. So removing this solution, it may be decrease the population diversity. So we, it will download the uh, 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 algorithm's performance. So uh, by using the traditional, or uh, by using the traditional one or the special kind of distance, they both of both two methods, they didn't consider the situation the multiple different feature subsets and the duplicate feature subsets. They also, they may have the 
same objective values of the same fitness, fitness values during the evolutionary process. So this is the limitation of when using the traditional one of the special coding distance. So in our method, we trying to over, overcome this limitation. We, uh, for example here, we need to calculate the coding distance of uh, a set of solutions. Here we name it uh, NS. So here means uh, NS uh, stores the solutions which are uh, and need to calculate their coding distance. So we divided the solutions in this set into two parts. So the, the first part mean named the NS, NS unique set, so here. So in, in NS unique set, the all solutions, they have different fitness values from each other. So then the remaining features, features of the sets, they are kept as NS remaining sets. So in the NS unique size, we calculate the solutions calling distance one by one by using the traditional calling distance or the special calling distance. After that, we calculate the solutions calling distance in the NS remaining size. But here we, we, we didn't calculate the solutions calling distance in the NS remaining size one by one. We just compare them with the solution in the NS unique set. So if one solution from NS remaining set is a duplicate solutions, so its calling distance will set to zero. So zero means during the evolutionary process, this uh, solution will be removed firstly. So otherwise, if this solution has different features from one solution in NS unique, so its calling distance will be set to the as the same value as the solution in the NS unique set, because they, they are equally important. They choose different feature, but they can achieve the same fitness values. So they should be treated, they should be treated equally during the evolutionary process. So after finishing the whole steps, we combine the whole solutions, then to get the final coding details of all the solutions in the NS set. So this is the main, main, main idea of our of proposed uh, improved coding di distance. So we distinguish the solutions by distinguish them into uh, duplicate solutions, all the multiple different solutions which can achieve the same fitness values. So during the evolutionary, during the experimental path, we use real value encoding and also we use uh, two different algorithm structure. So it means uh, the first one is in SGA2, we apply our method into NSG2 to form four different uh, algorithms. Again, in SGA2, we didn't use any uh, external archive. We just, uh, during the evolutionary process, we just select a certain number of features, uh, solutions enter into the next generation. But for the, um, MOPSO means multiple objective particle swarm optimization algorithm. And uh, in, this, in this structure, we use an uh, external archive to store solutions. So both, so the, uh, the, each algorithm, they have two different structures. If we use uh, special coding distance, so the algorithm named uh, NSG2 LCD or MOPSO LCD. So the other names, so they, they just using different uh, coding details method. By using our proposed method, they are named the NSG2 SCD or NSG2 SCD. So for MOPSO, it has the same, same structure. So for the data size, we use uh, 16 different uh, feature sets. They have different features, but the, all the different data sets, they have different features, classes, and uh, intents. Uh, in addition to using hypervolume and uh, uh, IGD to show the performance, here we also use two, uh, another two different uh, indicators here. I'm, I mean the PR and the AN. So the PR means the percentage rate. Percentage rate means the algorithm can find multiple different features with the same uh, fitness values or the objective values. 
So here, if like, like here, I give an example to show how to calculate the two values. So if one algorithm can find this kind of solutions, like in the uh, for the outputs, they find these three different features of size, but they can achieve the same classification performance. For this run, the SF means the uh, successful run will be set to one. And uh, the TS will be set to three because it's three different solutions. So the uh, PR and A means the uh, area number of, uh, across the whole runs. So we, we, we want to uh, calculate the, um, the algorithm performance to find the multiple different PF size with the same objective, uh, fitness, uh, or ob objective values. And uh, so here we, we show the P and A results based on the four NSG2 based uh, feature selection methods. So based on results, we can see that both P and A all increased by using our proposed uh, improved coding distance method. And uh, for the MOPSO, for the four MOPSO based uh, feature selection methods, the P and A also increased. Uh, like here for MOPSO SED to MOPSO, uh, we found that in all the 16 data sites, the P and A are increased. And uh, for the hypervolume and IGD, because they, uh, for the four NSG2 or MOPSO based uh, physical methods, they are keep in the same, uh, same level by using the real cause and test. So, um, it, it, and the, the paper gave more details about the hypervolume and the IGD uh, indicators. So here we just give a figure to show why the four NSG2 based method uh, or the MPSO based method, the hypervolume and IGD didn't have significant difference because uh, here I give a figure to show. The left figure means the training results and the figure in the right hand means the test uh, performance. So here we can see that because the, their shape are similar, both in the tra training and the test parts. So that's the reason why the hypervolume and, and the IGD, they didn't have significant difference. And here I give uh, a table to show some different uh, feature subsets uh, with the same uh, Cartesian performance, like here by in different uh, feature subsets, we can find that by using different uh, uh, features, they can achieve the same classification performance. Unlike in the zoo uh, data set, we found that by using the four different features, both they can achieve ninety percent classification accuracy. But here, F nine is the feature about uh, backbone. And F2 is a feature about uh, feathers. So if both two uh, feature subsets are provided to a user, the user may prefer the second uh, feature subset because maybe the uh, feature F2 is about a feather. So it's easier to collect than the uh, feature F9 because it's uh, some information about the backbone. And for the training time, because we want to see whether by using our proposed method, the training time is significantly increased or not. So uh, we found that by using our proposed method, the training time is almost keep the same level as the origin as the, uh, the previous or the original uh, algorithm. So the training time didn't have a significantly increase. So for the conclusion and the future work part, we found that by uh, improve the environmental selection strategies, it can help an uh, email-based feature selection method to find uh, more uh, different feature subsets with the same classification performance. And also in the future, we will try to further explore the relationships of the obtained uh, different feature subsets. Thanks for all your listening. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much for your presentation. I believe we have time for 
one quick question, assuming it exists. So please don't be shy. Yeah. Uh, so thank you very much for an interesting talk. Maybe I have just uh, one comment. If you work with, oh. uh, with classification, uh, maybe yeah. you could also try to estimate uh, measures for non-balanced sets, not just accuracy or error rate, uh, but for example, balanced error rate. So we measure the error for all positives and the error for all negatives. Yeah, yeah. That's the work that now I'm targeting on. So I'm trying to use different indicators to, yeah, to show the classification performance. And also, for example, you can try to maximize precision or recall. So I have done quite a lot of work on feature selection, uh, also multi-objective, and it's really interesting to see if you switch the objectives, not this very standard way. Yeah, that will be an interesting work. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Igor, for, for the suggestions. It does sound uh, a very good idea to me, I must say. <laughs>